Um, as Kenneth said, this is a joint presentation with Jed Boydell tackling uh, the what happened, why it happened, more or less we all know, but okay, it's good to go into some details. And then tackling also the other main problem of last summer, volatility. Is this one, right? Yeah. Okay, let's start with, uh, where do I point it? There. A difficult summer. Right. So, obviously, all the people who work in this environment, uh, they may have a correct idea or a perception, depending on how much they are informed. So, this was the perception of the space users. Folks will be landing shortly unless we divert it, slow down, stuck in an holding pattern, or any number of unpredictable and irrational scenarios. These irrational scenarios are also some NM irrational scenarios. So they think about it. So the next one, maybe you saw it already, the passenger's experience. And today flight delay is due to, I love this one, acts of God, weather, ATC, but who knows? Well, this is our perception. We do know why, of course. Dealing with the network every day, we see and we observe and we experience all the issues and we try to find a solution together with stakeholders. A bit of history. Last year, 25.5 million minutes of delay, and with an average, delay, with an average number of flights per day, that is 30,577. Uh, I just went back a little in time, 1998. We should have better. And uh, then uh, 2001 and 2010, 27 point something million, quite similar to 25. But if you look from 1998, 20,000 flights per day, 23,000, 26,000 per day. So that means that the network definitely had an evolution. The capacity of the network is in, has increased, definitely. As spaces are changed, technology, controllers, whatever. But again, something is happening that the, the performance that we experienced in 2013, that was the best year of the reference periods, 0 0.53. So the target is 0 0.5, so we were quite close. Let's have a look now uh, more in detail on the more recent years, 2008, 2018. The red line are the number of flights, the evolution of the number of flights in one year. So 2008, 9, 10, 11, you see up and down, economic downturn that has in some, in some way influenced the traffic demand and uh, the will of the people to, to move. But then, after 2014, all the indicators were saying traffic will increase in the next five, six years. My question is that, um, not a question, let's say a comment. At that time, it would have been nice to have long-term recruitment plans for the controllers. Because again, the No Martino part, it works. What is the point to have to split the airspace in thousands of sectors, in uh, three-dimensional cubes or whatever is the shape, to give more capacity if you don't have the staff to work, to man the sectors. What is the point? So our traffic control automated is not existing. Very likely, even my son will not see it. I don't know. Nobody can do a traffic control automated today. You need controllers. And so that is what is happening. Uh, look at the amount of delay generated. That are the blue bars, vertical bars. So we were able to maintain to the right, you can, uh, to, sorry, the numbers to the right are the number of flights and to the left, the amount of delay. It was okay, 2015, 16, 17, 14, 15 million, 16 million, but then boom, the problem came, arise again with all this dramaticity. So we do not have controllers, enough controllers. It's not only the FS issue, we will see later on. Uh, the records in 2018, similar to what Nick showed, the positive record, 3.8, of course, that's good for everybody. NSPs, aircraft operators are doing profit. 3.8, it's a lot, it's a lot of traffic. 11 million, another record beaten this year of flights with the record of, uh, on September of the 737101, but we have beaten the record every single day of that week. Summer delay, 17 million compared to something 9.5 of last year, of course, we all know that. And as Minik shown, 61 days with more than 300 regulations per day. 300 regulation, regulation per day means, means a nightmare, a mini disruption in the network. Last year, we had only 13 days, and that's where is the difference of the amount of delay of the gap between last year and this year. The big number, 468 regulation on 9th of August, you will see, it's, it's even, it's incredible. What I said before, 
that the number of regulations of that under, of 468 regulations, very likely maybe 100 regulations were completely useless. Because, again, whenever there is a small peak, I insist on this point, please regulate the peak. Take the five flights, move them out of the sector, and don't apply one hour and 20 minutes regulation. Uh, the overall delay, 25.6 million, and the 50,000 passengers per day were, were affected by a TFM delay. So according to the kind of negative forecast for the future, there, would be, there will be 400,000 passengers in less than 10 years if we stand still, and that will not be the case. The overall ATFM delay saved in 2018 by the NMOC staff, minute by minute, every single minute saved is an action from a human being that is looking at the delayed flight list, is doing an action, making a coordination, resolving the issue. 3.5 million, it's a lot. Also, this is a positive record and it's green. And of course, the biggest pizza in Italy was done last year. So, <laughs> the, I would like to talk about the uh, the IFPS guys and the AD, a hidden job that is, doesn't come often to the light. Flow, ma flow control is now this front line with you, but there are records also achieved over there. 42 prevalidation completed with the NFPs, with the stakeholders. A lot of work, many days of work from the FMP side and from the a our AD staff. So then maintaining 13,695 airspaces. Maintaining means to correct according to the request of the FMPs, the IP. The, it's, it's a huge job that is done every day. 3,400 live updates done in one year. 9,000 terminal procedures, hit and stars, all maintained. 10,450 traffic volumes that have to be maintained, checked against every IRAC. And then 26,881 restrictions, hard, soft, the PTR, RAD restriction. This is something that is becoming a bit unacceptable because I wouldn't like to work as a flight dispatcher today and get rid of all these rad restrictions trying to find my way across Europe in order to find the shortest route and I have to zigzag or do whatever in order to avoid all this. Flight plan, IAPS. So the number of flight plans, of course, messages follows the traffic growth. So last year, 29.7 million, additional 1.4 million this year, plus 5%, all treated by IFPS. IFPS staff, they uh, are quite eager and uh, busy in correcting the mistakes that appear into the flight plans of the aircraft operators that come from uh, the aircraft operator with his own flight dispatcher or from the CFSPs. We manage with the work of uh, Andy Woolen team and the back office, Jean-Marc Venturini and Phil Bradbury, to work with the CFSPs and with the aircraft operators that were giving us so many mistakes and the reduction compared to 2017 is quite significant, minus 38%. So good work done, everybody. I applause the CFSPs, our staff, to this achievement. The target is zero flight plans wrong into the system. That's the target. And so it will speed up a lot of work and less instability. Traffic growth, as I said again, just a quick look again, 11 million. The growth was very high, a bit everywhere, widespread, but particularly in the southeast taxis and the Eastern Europe and the Southwest as well, a bit everywhere. 1,200 flights per day in the network. 1,200. It's a lot. And of course, the busiest day, 7th of September. Now, why? Uh, this is the slide with the official reason that may be modified, plus or minus some dozens of minutes of delay, but this will be the scheme, more or less. You see that the top reason is weather. Second is ATC capacity and bronze medal staffing. And then we have industrial action, space management, and, some, and, and so on. Uh, please note that already ATC staffing is three times the delay given in 2017. Weather is increased by 2 million, 3.4 ATC capacity. I would like to demonstrate, and my convincement is that the main reason is staffing. Because, oh, sorry, I have to go back. Because when regulations are applied on collapse sectors, generate more delay. And collapse sectors are implemented whenever an NSP doesn't have enough staff to split them into the elementary sectors. So 25 million last year, 15.8. Now let's look at the delays at the airport. So these are the top 40 delayed airports. And uh, I want to, sp I split just between two main reasons, weather and capacity. So the green is the capacity, the weather is capacity. As far as I'm concerned, what I would like to see, and we all would like to see at the end of the year, is only the turquoise color. The delays at an airport 
shall be only due to weather or any other problem, uh, incident, whatever, but not capacity. Now, what's the point of having a, a, an airport that is coordinated, coordinated, with the capacity that is quite crystal clear, that should be the runway capacity first, then followed by the number of gates, machines, or whatever, personnel, that makes the overall capacity at an airport. But what is the point of having delays due to capacity at a coordinated airport? That shall disappear. So airports shall do their homework with the airline. I'm not saying who is guilty. It's not about blaming somebody, but simply something is not working well over there. Uh, so Amsterdam, just to give you the amount of delay, more or less 600,000, almost half a million for Barcelona and 439. Uh, if you look now where I'm indicating, look at Charles de Gaulle, uh, London Stanford, not definitely a major airport, but Frankfurt, Frankfurt. Where is the delay due to capacity? It's not existing. So there is a difference between the performance of certain airports with others. Some are able, Wien, what else? Oslo, London City. So there are many airports who do not produce delay due to capacity, to the excess of traffic. The rest? Uh, should be again again weather i want to see only weather but 25 delayed atc top five now there are different reasons here it's not only weather and capacity uh, the situation is much more complex so weather is yellow disruption orange stuffing red and capacity is that kind of uh, carminio i don't know i don't know in english anyway the reason is this in reality that is following the reasons that i listed before in the previous slide but the situation is not exactly like that. We'll see later on. Now, to give you the hint of how much delay, Kazru, 4 million, Marseille, 2.8, Maastricht, 1.4, France, 1.2, 1 million, France, and Vienna, 800,000. Now, the staffing issue in the main crossroad. On the left, you have here the traffic growth by FMP. You notice that Kazru, 0.4, and Maastricht, 1.3. Uh, in reality, the growth was much more, but we have removed 300 flights from Kazu and Maastricht last year. So, of course, the growth would have been much higher without the four ACC measures that were applied. You see the growth in other ACC quite significant. Look at Cyprus, look at Praha, look at Langen. Now, to the right, you have just a graphic representation of the amount of delay that was shown in the previous slide. 4 million, 2.8 Marseille, and so on. Is the color coding. Now, this is Europe. And the red arrows show where the staffing issues are experienced. You understand that this is the main crossroad of Europe that are in the middle of every flow, every overflight, must pass from one of that ACC. So in that red arrow areas, Maastricht, Brest, Marseille, Praha, and Kazu, not only them, because the phenomenon is widespread in the network, it's not only them, are just concentrating on the crossroad, they all had staffing issues. And this was the 28th of July, a picture taken at some time during the day, and it's a warm-up, not warm-up Formula One, it's a, it's a warm-up. So delay per flight, <laughs> <laughs> delay per flight, the blue is, uh, every flight has a delay between zero and 15 minutes. The orange is 16 and 30, 31, 45, yellow, and then red, more than 45 minutes. Now, if you want to fly that day, somebody wanted to fly from Marseille to Berlin, I think they are still waiting on the boarding place to, to board because the delay was awful. And this is a very likely picture of what is going to happen next summer. I don't want to scare you. We are doing everything we can. We do hope that all the measures in place, the situation will be a bit different, but please don't expect miracles. So this was 61 days during the summer. The same situation, the same picture. You name it, for staffing, for strike, you name it. Doesn't matter what is the reason. That was the situation. It's almost impossible to fly on time. And that is why the EU-261 is causing big losses to the airlines, or big costs to the airlines. There should have been profit in reality. And it goes into our tickets then, by the way. So uh, what I wanted to say before is just to demonstrate that the staffing is the main reason for delays. Now, please concentrate on the colors here. The, Believe me, believe my word, a regulation applied on collapse sector, whatever is the reason, produces more delay than, uh, than on elementary sector. Elementary Watson is quite clear. But let's look at Kazru that remains stable compared to 2017. The number of regulations applied due to weather in the collapse sector 
diminished by 3%, but of course the staffing was more. Maastricht, 51 to 59. Rams, 61 to 80 percent of the regulation applied on collapse sectors. 69 to 72 Marseille. That means that the, that the delay that weather would have generated if regulation would have been applied on elementary sectors was much more because the regulations were applied on collapse sectors. Now, let's look at the regulation applied due to capacity on collapse sectors. The light green is on collapse sectors. Look at it. Casual, 45%. 2017 regulation applied due to ATC capacity in elementary sectors in 2018 because of the staffing issues, 77%. So next, Maastricht, 27 to 30, 73 to Rance, to 69, 52 to 31 in Marseille. But in Marseille, most of the regulations were applied to staffing. What I'm saying is that most of the regulation, a big number of regulations that were applied to any reason, they should have been applied with the reason staffing. So that is why I'm saying that the staffing issue influence any other regulation reason and trigger higher ATFM delays. Staffing is the main reason for the ATFM delay. The network will never be stable until APCO's controller's workforce will match the traffic growth, the expected traffic growth, not in the next two, three years, in the long term. And the network care space reorganization is necessary considering the forecast on traffic growth for RP3 and RP4. Italian highways are stuck. If you want to go from north to south of Italy, during the summer, you have only two lanes, one to the east and one to the west, and you will be stuck over there because, of course, they closed two lanes, one only left due to work in progress. So when I go to Brussels airport, every time there is a big peak period of passengers that are arriving that want to board somewhere, what does it happen? They open more gates in order for passport control. That's the way of doing it. You have more demand. You have a customer that wants to fly wants to drive, wants to do everything provided the service provider provides enough stuff. Now, industrial actions, I know there is the other big pain, uh, caused more or less 1.3, 1.4 million minutes of delay last year, uh, because also the reason other, it collects the reasons of the regulations applied on the neighbors because of the network effect of the flights that are avoiding that area. Uh, France, 20 days of strike, Geoffrey was right, 16 days in Marseille and four national strike generating 1.2 million. In Italy, there were 16 hours of strike split in three days, 40,000 minutes. And Greece, six hours of strike split in two days with 5,000 minutes. So, okay, don't make you fool by, it seems that the Italy and Greece are quite fine, no problem. No, there are a lot of flight cancellation on top of that. But this is also damage for the aircraft operators. So there are strikes to generate more delay. There are strikes to generate flight cancellation. Uh, the 20 days of strike in France, of course, ge also generate cancellation, agreed with the aircraft operator or not, because when you get, when you are stuck into an airspace, you cannot cross an airspace because also the other flights are getting regulated in the French, with the French strike. Of course, if you have two hours delay or you route around like Geoffrey uh, showed us before, or uh, you cancel the flight, or you pay the U261 uh, uh, <laughs> taxes or whatever. For some, but I'm not going to into detail this, but if some of you at home want to see what is the network effect, how many minutes of delay, this is the list of all the strikes done in 2018 with the relevant amount of delay for the ANSP and for the neighbors. Okay, what else? Airspace management, that hides the reason military activity. In 2017, 192,630. So the number of military activities is definitely increasing, and particularly in areas that are already heavily congested by traffic. It is quite obvious, traffic increase, congested area, military activity, 600,000. Other, I said before, that is just uh, reactionary delays because of the strike. Special event remains stable. It's something that we have to accept in some way. So special event is an airspace transition, a new system in some NSP that in some way forces the controllers to forces the NSP to reduce the capacity in order to produce safety and to give time to controllers to get used to, that, to the change. So this is something that we will never, I would like to see more about this delay. That means that there are many airspace transitions, that the airspace is being renewed, renovated, and so on. Uh, the rest, equipment are the radar failures, you name it, FDP failures. Also, this is something that in some way, it is always in the pipeline and we have to accept it as something that we cannot avoid. And the rest, to be honest with you, environmental issues, aerodrome services, non-significant. And now, 
I will have another slide then at the end, and now I leave the, please keep the questions or the doubts if I was not clear for after, and I leave the microphone to Jed for the volatility. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jed Boydell. I'm uh, the head of performance forecast and relations, but also I'm uh, in charge of operational analysis. I think this morning you've heard several times the word stability, volatility, predictability. Um, I'm going to give you an insight into what work we've been doing. This is not a new subject. Um, we first saw it in 2017. There have been various papers around uh, to various meetings and we've been trying to dig deeper to understand it. Uh, I'll give you some insight and hopefully it'll give us some, some clues as to what we might talk about later today and tomorrow on, on how we handle it. Um, so I'll just give an example first. Uh, I think w Holger gave some slides where you saw what was happening in Karlsruhe. Uh, so we'll look at the on, on route example. But also I think Francine mentioned, I think he used the term jumping CTOT. I've heard that phrase several times. I think other people made the intervention of, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that as well. This is the en route version. Um, we've been collecting data uh, over the last year and we've been churning it and we're trying to rebuild the view. Um, I think, I think uh, Rule mentioned, you know, what does the FMP face three hours before when they're making decisions? What we're trying to show here is exactly what they're looking at. So y here we have uh, an example from, this is a Bud Budapest and uh, certainly last year more the central ACCs were we're making waves about this issue of predictability and volatility. We see places like uh, Budapest now uh, and the e e more the central eastern side also coming up with the same issue. What you see here is um, a four hour period. We're targeting uh, airspace in, in Budapest around about uh, 10, 20 to 11, 30. So these sort of like hourly counts over 20 minute periods. Um, the striking one is that you see a whole load of green, about two-thirds, uh, around about 40 flights per hour. Uh, those were expected, they were planned at the time, and they, we found a flight plan at the end of the day uh, to say they were going to be in that sector, and they actually turned up in the sector. What you then see is the sort of the light blue, uh, which tends to start on the left-hand side and, and progresses towards about an hour before uh, the actual entry which we're calling, they were planned, but they never showed up. So we see a flight plan at the end of the day for this airspace, and you can see there, if I take the left-hand side, there were, it starts at 40 and it goes to about 48. So eight flights in that 20-minute period, roughly four hours before they were expected, the, 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 the airspace was expecting them. The flight plan stayed at the end of the day, but they never showed up. And you see that build across, and then sort of drifts away in, in the last hour. Then the other interesting one is the orange, which is um, we didn't find a flight plan for them at the end of the day. There may have been a flight plan early on, maybe not, but in the hour of entry that we're, we're looking at, uh, that traffic volume, that airspace, wasn't expecting them, um, but they turned up. Um, so we use, we're trying to avoid the word intruder, so apologies to the airline community, uh, you tell us, constantly, um, but the, the alternative unexpected traffic is, uh, is not as sharp, so I, we apologize for that. But, you know, it is, that's the, that's, that's the guts of it, uh, they're unexpected traffic. Um, so the systems are showing something and they disappear, or they're not expected and they appear. And I think at the heart of it, that is mainly the problem. We will look at some of the other issues in the hours before, as Rule said, you know, F <laughs> FMPs are not waiting to the last hour before they do something. They're looking at the left-hand side. So understanding that three-hour, four-hour period, but also what's happening at the end, I think, are the, the keys to understanding what we do for the summer. That, that's the main message. Um, we can also see where it all starts to go wrong. So this is the same example. It's, I think it's the day after Monique's example and, and Johnny's example. So you had that horror day of 300,000. 
this is the Sunday. Um, so if you think we had, um, this is looking at the orange, the ones at the end, the orange that weren't expected. This is where we have identified um, something changed from the flight plan uh, or where they weren't expected. So you've got, you know, off to the left in France. So we're looking at Budapest ACC. Uh, you know, something happened in France that signals to us they ended up in uh, Budapest a f an hour or two later. But you see most of it, oops, okay. Most of it is within the Budapest airspace or very close, so Poland, I think it was Romania, but there are other areas as well. So we can identify, and you'll, you'll see an example, so may, may, maybe remember France for, for a, a slide later, but we can see there are options there. If, 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 if you know things are changing in France, and it's going to be a problem in Budapest, then maybe there's, there's options there for doing something procedural if, if we know what's going on. Um, what we also looking at is that this could be, we, this could be anecdotal, this could be a flash in the pan or one off, but what we're trying to do is build across the summer a view as to is this a trend. And for that particular airspace, we get exactly the same picture. So this, this is uh, 18 times it was regulated uh, that hour uh, over the summer. The target was a 44, and in general, we, we see a, a trend of 44, but the same pattern, you get a whole load of flights that didn't turn up at the end, and you get a whole load that, that arrived that weren't expected. Um, so the trend is there, so I think that would flag to us, we need to have a good look at uh, what's happening in Budapest. Um, it's not just the amount, but the, the, the traffic mix, we're calling it. So, I mean, this is an idea of how, how the traffic mix changes over time. So I'll just take this example here at 10.40. Um, you saw the orange. So eight, eight flights arrived that weren't, that, that, that weren't there in the period before, and six disappeared. So for the, for the airspace itself, the FMP would have seen a plus two. But in terms of traffic, so that in a way is, is potentially the systems then doing their job. This was regulated, so if one changed its time, they put another one in there. And that is linked, I think, to then to the, uh, the SRMs and the changes. This is just an idea of what's happening. Um, trying to sort of get a general message for the network, um, that example beefed up to the network is what you see here on the left. Um, so this is network-wide for summer, and you see in general, um, we're looking at time deviation and what we call airspace deviation. So the, the green is that, you know, in general, four hours, three hours, two hours before, most of the explanation for the change in, in the traffic count can be put down to time variation. So, but in the last hour, most of it is due to airspace so that's your avoiders and that's your in, in your unexpected traffic so this i think is the uh is the big one to look at uh and it's probably the one that's more controllable that's for the network if you take my example that i gave for budapest it has twice the network average there so in some places this will be a bigger issue uh than others so we can see that just uh an idea of what's driving it um Again, what we've taken here, this is the Budapest example. This is a Karlsruhe upper sector example. You'll see that in that last hour or, or, or the final hour or just before, you see green and blue. That's basically, we're looking at the messages that, that we're identifying that are, that, that are showing up and are flagging things up. These are FSAs and CPRs. That tells us it's more airspace related. That's, that's what we saw in the oranges, that, that explains it. But if you look at Karlsruhe, um, sure, you've got the green and the blue, which is airspace, but pretty much half of it is still uh, CASA and DPI messages, which basically says the, the aircraft is still on the ground. Um, so depending where you are in the network, um, you're exposing the, the word exposure. Um, I think you, you used exposure. So the FMP, the ACC, has different exposure to, to, to time or, or to airspace variation. Uh, so that's one to take forward as well. So I think Karlsruhe with Frankfurt nearby, with, as we saw with the disruption with various 
changes in sequences, that would that would be a last minute uh, signal to you and you would find out uh, later on. Uh, with an eye on tomorrow and some potential, um, I, I, I pointed at the map. This is the example for the, uh, the Budapest again. What we tried to do is look at the, uh, the call sign and the, uh, the city pairs and, and how often they were in the orange, if you like. Um, and this is the anticipation time. So you'll see, you know, we, some of them you've got no chance. E even the, si the event had happened before the system knew you get a negative number. Most of them are single digit minutes. So that tells us that was that pattern around uh, Budapest in Hungary. So you might say, well, maybe this is a Hungarian problem or, or a near neighbor problem could be handled. Quite a few of them have some big numbers. So I think the Air France from, from Paris, I think that's to Romania. You know, you've got 50 minutes lead time. So, you know, if you can observe this in operations, if you know, if you see the trend, if you can monitor that in the summer and see the trend, you should be able to potentially uh, do something about that. So there's potential there to, to, to analyze and look at it. Just a final view. Um, we talked about the jumping CETOS. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is our summary. Um, Along the bottom, you've got a lead time till when SRMs were sent out. This is the lead time before actual takeoff time. This is a summary for the whole. It says at 2.17 there. It should, should say 18. But essentially, 17 was pretty much the same picture as well. What you have is the number of SRMs sent out. And you'll see that there's some quite, there's three or four patterns there. People said it earlier. One of the biggest... Uh, proponents of updated SRMs is obviously our system and you see that this is the true revision process working so sending quite a heavy load all the way across the timeline to, to take off potentially sending uh, updated messages I think the next one is holes recovery which again is I think when they hit the button and uh, again a similar sort of procedure in the system but this one was mentioned, regulation change. I think quite a few people, this was mentioned uh, in, in several of the presentations earlier. This is basically FMPs. We saw there were over 400 regulations with frequent changes. So this area is basically saying that's, that's what's driving the SRM message. So it's quite a heavy proportion all the way across the timeline. So I think part of the actions and the discussion tomorrow is how you do that better, how you do that smarter. Um, that, that would solve a big problem and to a degree that is driving a lot of the uh, true revision process as well and, and holds recovery. Um, maybe this one here is um, things like uh, runway updates, SIDS and STARS changes, that can change the profile in the, uh, in the system and then you put you in some other airspace potentially and then, then the system reacts. So it's another one to look at. But the other one, as you get closer to uh, takeoff time, new input data is basically uh, either the, the ground or the airline uh, updating times. I think someone mentioned, you know, the, the leg, the next leg. You know, some of this is, you know, m maybe the baggage handling problems, you update your off-clock time. But maybe a lot of it is the inbound flight, late inbound, and having to update the, the takeoff time. So understanding that and what's happening with your operations, would be useful to know as well because in the last 45 minutes that's that's quite a high proportion of the reasons why the SRMs are going out. So I think the word was complex. I think this shows it is. There's uh, 30,000 actors in the air on the ground all trying to uh, grab a bit of the airspace. So not an easy one. There, there, we've had a few actions over the summer. Um, we tried uh, something with Frankfurt to see whether they could protect themselves a bit more from SRMs that had uh, mixed results, I would say. Um, and you'll see tomorrow it's about looking at the regulation practice and <coughs> maybe looking at some smarter parameters for these, this CASA process. Um, so in summary, yes, stability. We've, we, we already know it's a problem. Uh, I'll summarize it. So the f can you go up one? John has beat me to it again. Okay, stability is an issue, we know that. I think the key, we talked about it, is cooperation, collaboration. I think that's, that's, that's what we need to get into uh, tomorrow. Um, 
understanding the dynamics. So this for me is traffic dynamics in the network. Really understanding what's going on is, is, is important. Um, we're developing a tool uh, to try and do that and we're trying to show it to some of the FMPs to, so this is what's happening in your airspace over summer and maybe we can use that as a monitoring tool for summer to sort of nip things in the bud as they happen rather than, as Joe says, wait till the end of summer and work out what went on. And a big focus on those seed top updates. I'll stop there. I think John is uh, back on his feet. Okay, thanks, Jed. Don't worry, it's only one slide, uh, just to conclude. Okay, uh, the last slide is about a possible scenario for next summer. And uh, of course, I'm not saying that we have good news, but I can ensure everybody, in particular the airspace users, that the NSPs, the network manager, all the actors, we are all doing a big effort in order to mitigate. We do hope to get better, to do better than 25.6 million. Of course, we do, we hope so. So we have a number of requests that you will see tomorrow to be addressed to all the actors because the system is very complex. Nobody has the solution from one side. The NSP, even if we, we would have staffing, even if all the sectors, even if Caslo would be able to open all the sectors today or next summer with the maximum sector configuration, they still would give delay because we have an airspace structure that is old 20 years. It's quite old. It shall be reviewed completely according to the flows, the, where the flows are going, really, without the constraints of the root charges or taking into account the tailwind in order to save money and fuel. The root charges is another main issue, of course, that dictates the direction of the flows because if I have to pay a lot of money to a highway, I prefer to go to a side road and don't pay the highway to save money, to make my flight profitable. That's the, the business of the airlines. It's fundamental. So then at the end, may I go forward or do I have to continue to <laughs> Okay. So we, all the actors are necessary. We have to take all our responsibilities no role is secondary or is non-significant. Even one single flight, a flight dispatcher, a flight that is relevant, the pilot that is following the flight plan, route and profile, is important because if that is not done, it can create an over-delivery 2,000 miles downstream. So we will see tomorrow, we have a set of requests and we do hope to get to do better things if all the actors will do what they have to do and if this works. Okay, go the next. Go next. Can I? Go to maybe the next. Okay. Okay. Next, next. Okay. Right. Okay. So. What will happen in 2019, the menu is more or less the same of 2018. So there is a lack of capacity in several ACC. The traffic growth is expected, traffic growth, but definitely not, maybe not at the same level as so 2018. I may be wrong, but still we expect 600 to 900 flights per day additional in the network that will still have the same capacity of last year. So you understand that you are, we are adding more and more flights to a congested situation. So weather, of course, will be the main issue. I said before that the 7.9 million are fake in some way, but still weather has a major impact at airport and en route during the summer. Industrial actions, there will still be. Traffic volatility of seen seen by JED is an issue. There was an in-depth analysis of the reasons why, and we are quite confident that the situation will be better this summer. I'm quite sure about that. I'm putting the face on this, but again, uh, we have to all do our job properly. Uh, so again, 2019 may be worse than 2018. All these ANSPs, their airspace is congested with the present, compared to the present staffing level. So there is no hope for improvement. The plan that Razvan will show tomorrow or today, Razvan, today, about is a 
I think that is the biggest plan ever in moving flights outside congested areas and moving on the side roads. We are talking about maybe six or 700 flights per day that uh, will be removed, moved out of the congested sectors via the US restriction or even more, I don't know. And this will save an unbelievable amount of delay because if that 700 whatever flights will be in that sector, it's not 25.6 million. We have to go to 40 plus. So next, Brussels, Amsterdam, ACC, there will be flights who will be level capped into these airspaces. And of course, it's also likely that some regulation will be applied over there. But with the delay, that will be much less of the delay that would be generated if all the flights would be still in the original sectors. Same for Brest, that will take uh, additional flights rerouted out of Marseille and Rams. Lisbon, of course, will take a lot of flights that will be rerouted and very likely they may go, may give some delay. So again, less than the original one. The Southeast Axis, Austria, Croatia, Greece, Cyprus, delays will be there as well. There may be some staffing issues somewhere, traffic in Greece, you saw Cyprus is always at almost double digit increase every year. And then the weather, of course, en route, and the political situation in the Cyprus, in the southeastern part of Cyprus, that nobody knows how it's going to end up. Anyway, the conclusion is that ATFM delays will be widespread in the network. Again, my message is that I'm quite confident that we can do better. The plan is quite ambitious, is huge. It involves all the actors that have been coordinated with everybody with a huge collaboration from all the actors. And we have a set of requests from all the actors that we will then list tomorrow asking you to do your job. So thank you very much for this. And uh, now the next one is Kenneth. Thank you very much, Gianni.